we are coming up on, I guess, uh, the, the start of the session. And, uh, and I uh, put in the chat window a link uh, to, to a, a website that's very much a work in progress. But um, we, we have been trying to respond to legislation that they passed in Virginia a couple of years ago which mandated that all elementary teachers would teach computational thinking. And we, we had a, a doctoral uh, dissertation and, and some studies and found that, as you would expect, most elementary teachers in Virginia, at least, have, have not had very much uh, preparation for teaching computational thinking. And, and also that even though the legislation was passed, because it's not on the high stakes test, there's not a lot of enthusiasm by principals and uh, superintendents uh, to, to, to venture out. And we also found that when they do attempt to do this, they uh, often what they think is computational thinking isn't necessarily aligned with what, uh, you know, the, the computer science societies would, would think is computational thinking. So our, our work has been informed uh, by all the work that goes back to the early days of Logo. Uh, people like Brian Harvey, Paul Goldenberg, uh, Cynthia Sellum, and many others have uh, given us ideas and tools and directions. And SNAP essentially lets us do many of the same things that folks are doing many years ago in Logo. So that this is very much a work in progress. Uh, we're eager to get input uh, with the caveat that it's not completely baked. We're still in the process of figuring this out. Uh, you're more than welcome to use any of the resources that we're developing. And we're also interested in any feedback that you might have. Um, maybe while we're waiting for, we've got like, one or maybe while we're waiting for a couple more people to join, we could go around and you could tell us uh, who you are. I'm assuming, uh, you know, we already know, been talking with Debbie and know her, but who else is joining us and what are your interests? I'm April Brown and I teach at the community college level. Um, I have tiny humans that I want to introduce, but also working in their classrooms and hopefully in the long run supporting specifically K3 and okay. teaching coding so that um, by the time they get to me, you know, my job will be doing all the fun stuff. Great. Thank you, April. I see Paul is with us. And since some of our work has been Inspired by him, maybe we'll show you a couple of things that we've done that that builds on his work. And and also, April, I should mention you, you probably saw it, but he's they they had a session earlier today that's uh, very much focused on the kind of kids you're interested in. Um, work that's being done at the Educational Development Corporation. Um, who else is in the room with us, and what are your interests? I'd love to introduce myself quickly. Just real quick, I'm Aaron. I'm the SNAP volunteer here, so I'll be moderating stuff like that. And just let me know if you have any questions. I'll be like fielding questions and things like that. Aaron, thank you for all the hard work you've done to pull out and to make the, 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 the SNAP conference possible. I'd like to introduce one other member of our team. Rich Nguyen is a professor of computer science at the University of Virginia and um, also as a uh, focus on machine learning and uh, all of our work that we've been doing uh, has been done in collaboration with Rich. So I'm glad he could, he could drop in with us. Thank you, Glenn. I'm glad to be part of this section. Um, well, Glenn, it looks like we've got about uh, 25 people or so in here. So it may be more time effective if people just wanna introduce themselves in the chat. That would um, be great. Uh, I just, uh, 
That would be great, Joe. I posted a link to, to the website that you see on my screen. Uh, and if you could introduce yourself in chat, that would be great. So the basic format or goal that we had was to have at least one or two activities in each content area uh, working with SNAP. And uh, so we've got some things on digital storytelling, art, wordplay. Uh, we haven't posted it yet, but we've got some things about graphing, board games, and so on. And a, a lot of these things are very much in alignment with things that are being done at other places, both in things that have gone before like Logo and also in Scratch and in Snap. Uh, so let, let me just give you, uh, because Paul's here, just to give you an idea of the format, uh, here, here's an example. And while we're here, it hasn't been published yet, but in the September issue, of the Journal of Technology and Teacher Education, we are going to uh, have a, a republish a couple of chapters from a book that Paul Goldenberg wrote that for us at least inspired uh, a lot of our work. And so you can access the proof copy now. I wanted to make it available to everybody and then in the fall, it'll be available in the, the regular journal. And uh, we also, Paul was also kind enough to do a reflection on what was the meaning of this and where does it come from and, and where might it go. And so I, I, if you haven't, if many of you may be familiar with this already, but if you're not, I think it's a good starting place to see where this, this came from. And then, um, we also, Paul has um, looked this over, but any of the mistakes are ours. We looked at, well, how does, how does the list-based, text-based language, you know, get translated into SNAP, you know, if we were to kind of go back in a time machine and say, all right, now how could, what does the list look like in a text-based system versus SNAP? So, to kind of introduce that, we've also tried to make a... Hi guys, welcome to the unit. We've tried to make a video tutorial uh, that kind of walks folks through. And so this is Alexis Kellum, who is a, a fourth year student at the University of Virginia, who's working with us. And uh, so she, in this case, she's talking about what can you do with a list? Or that, some gossip that anyone does. So this is going to be my list of does what. And I don't remember exactly what list I used in my command, so I'm just going to drag it from here and we'll reuse it. So some things in my list. Our procrastinates, goes to the lawn, texts while walking, sings, sings in the shower, and says hi. And the next thing you want to do is put your list in this. So, so uh, Alexis uh, had never done programming of any kind before she started working with us. And it's either a feature or a bug, depending on how you look at it. But she's kind of learning it as she's showing it on the screen. Uh, we had a couple of goals here. We wanted uh, people, uh, many of us uh, are, are, well, I'll say that we have more years behind us than ahead of us, perhaps. And we wanted somebody who would be more contemporary and also someone who's learning. You can see her learning as she, she explores this. Uh, we've also been exploring uh, is it possible to do interactive tutorials? We're not completely satisfied with this. One of the things I'm struck by is the highest form of the tutorial seems to be the PDF. And we, and we have PDF documents that go over some of the things that we've been exploring. Uh, but a lot of the kids that we work with and even the teachers we work with are not uh, they're not great readers. So we used a tool developed by a colleague at the University of Virginia. 
that allows us to put uh, put snap in a frame on the right and then have some suggestions of things that you could do and with a, with a live interface so that if uh, if you want you can you can have this live interface on the right uh, we're still exploring this because it's far far from perfect but but we're very interested in we're very interested in uh, finding ways that are more interactive. And I, I was actually, Paul, I was very interested in the, the fact that you're doing things like the number line, your, your instruction about SNAP is in SNAP. Um, mm -hmm. And I think ultimately that would be the goal that we would have as well. Uh, but uh, we don't really have a way to have an overlay to point things out in the command palette or other places if we're trying to ask people to try things out. So, so this, this is pretty much the overview of, of the sorts of, you know, we've got some stuff on, on digital storytelling. Uh, many of the things uh, that, that you're familiar with, uh, we're actually, uh, you know, hoping to wind up with some things with the Arduino and LEDs and that type of thing. Uh, so here you can see Hi everyone, um, this is Sally. Today I'm going to show you how to use an Arduino to port search, click it again, it will turn the LED light off. So you can duplicate this code block. So that, that is pretty much the trajectory of, of where we're currently at. And what we're hoping to do, I'm trying to get back to that main Main site. What we're hoping to do is sort of find out what other things like what we're doing are going on and also get some suggestions about what directions would be helpful as we continue to try to build this out. Uh, so we're, we, uh, you're more than welcome to, to explore what we've put, posted so far, but uh, we'd be very interested in any reactions, thoughts, or suggestions that you might have for us. Hey, Cynthia, how are you doing? I loved your article that finally went up about the history of Logo. Oh, thank you. That was uh, eight of us. Yeah, I know. That was quite the work. Oh, yeah. Each it's, of us had a different opinion. <laughs> well, it was good to have it all in one place. It really was. It was much needed. I like what you're trying to do. Well, I find it interesting that I knew a lot more 30 years ago than I know now. <laughs> the farther along we go, the less we seem to understand that's true about for all of us. <laughs> how to do this well. When we have a question here, it says, is part of the goal to re-implement Paul's logo book in Snap? What about the other books in that series? Okay, I can I can answer that. Uh, uh, we Brian Harvey with Paul as a model. Brian Harvey consented to allow us to publish a couple of chapters from Logo. Uh, uh, logo uh, computer science logo style, and we are very interested in the journal. Uh, of trying to, we have a section we call seminal articles where we're trying to capture things that we think people in schools of education uh, should know today. Uh, I would describe it as something that's not so much trying to recreate uh, the work of Logo, Paul's and others in SNAP as to say it's inspired by it as, as a jumping off place. And of course, our concept about what might work only survives until the first kid works with it or the first teacher works with it. And then we realize <laughs> our ideas of what 
we have a sort of a parallel universe in our minds that doesn't map to the real world always. Uh, I think I think the goal was the goal of the logo group and the from the very beginning, which is the idea that kids can learn by by doing and trying to find the one thing. You know, there are wonderful things like the beauty and joy of computing that are being very successful. But I think at the elementary level, at least, uh, most teachers are more concerned about teaching reading. And it has never scaled uh, in spite of some wonderful efforts. And so we're trying in Virginia to do what we can to kind of advance that, just because uh, for the same reasons that that people have try, been trying to do this since the 1960s. So I, I would say more it's inspired by rather than, we're not trying to bring the 1960s into the 2010s, 20s. We're just trying to figure out where should we go given the computational capabilities we have today. And I, I should mention there's a group of us. Uh, James Rudder is in Maine. Uh, we have some folks in Colorado and uh, some folks at Princeton uh, who are kind of an informal discussion group uh, exploring how we might go about this. Glenn, I may just add a comment from my side of things. That over the past spring, we've been working to both develop this and pilot and and obviously uh, for you know all of us a lot of our work had to change this spring and sort of an unexpected um, you know outcome for doing research into this and studying how students interact with this content was having to conduct sort of observational studies with students going through the curriculum. And so doing it through Zoom proved to be a really powerful tool just from a data collection standpoint. Um, you know, Glenn and I were on a Zoom call watching students go through this curriculum and we got basically as close to a, you know, complete visual of their interactions with the content, their stumbling blocks. And so it was really insightful from a curriculum development standpoint to to actually just observe a student through Zoom screen sharing, going through the SNAP projects, and a lot of stuff surfaces that um, you know just bring out some of the assumptions that you had, and and it, I think it really helps as a, a refining tool if people are you know developing their own SNAP projects or curriculum uh, and implementing it in the classroom. So that was just something I wanted to share because you know, we had uh, intentions to pilot the stuff in the classroom and then all of a sudden we were doing everything virtually. And so um, it wasn't a complete loss um, in, that, in that sense. But one thing that, that uh, I'd be interested, uh, I, I assume many of you are on the SNAP forums. Is that, is that correct? Is that assumption correct? can't tell. I, you know, I, it just seems to me they, they have an education section, but it's not as active as some of the other sections. And we would be interested in connecting with more. We're delighted to be able to connect with you, you know, briefly today. But we're also interested in more extended conversations. And I'm wondering, would the SNAP education section of the SNAP forum be a place that we connect uh, with others? who share, share these interests. For anybody who's interested, I don't, I don't see why not. Um, going off of your last comment, James, there's another question here in the chat asking if, uh, oh, Okay, never mind. You just saw it and answered it. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't explicitly, I, there, you know, naturally people are thinking out loud, but I think using some of explicit instructions for the data collection standpoint to have them think out loud or uh, describe what they're doing um, 
it, it was pretty interactive between us as the you know sort of instructors and researchers and the students so i'll, I'll just um but I, I appreciate that cynthia thank you for that question paul could, could you give us an update on the status of the edc project where, where is that going to go oh, our our um, work with uh, mathematics with little kids yeah uh, well, the aim is to have um, the aim is to have micro worlds focused on mathematics, not on the programming, but that develops the programming as a language yeah. for kids expressing mathematics and exploring it, and to run that from uh, second through fifth. Our official proposal is second through fifth grade, although. We've already told the NSF that we're cheating a little bit and going to sixth grade, uh, just because we have to actually wind up testing things at multiple grade levels. Okay. Anyway, to find out where they are. Uh, kids learn differently when they're working in interactive language. And so some of the expectations of what they can learn in mathematics change when they're learning it this way, or appear to change when they're learning it this way. So, so you've, you've clearly felt like the restricted block for what you're doing is maybe the only effective way to do it. Is that, is that correct? Um, no, I don't think it's the only way, but when you're working with second graders, sure. so we, we tried in the very beginning, uh, we tried just hiding other blocks and yeah. you know, having one, um, you know, one pallet with the stuff in it that they needed. And um, the kids, mostly by accident, but sometimes out of um, you know, poking around out of curiosity, wound yeah. up in places that neither could they get out of nor could their teacher. Okay. So it's really as a way to help teachers make this usable, it has to be on the surface, the mathematics that they're trying to do or the you know, linguistics, the spelling, whatever. I actually have great fascination in that area. Yeah. Um, uh, as you know, um, uh, to be that on the surface and to use the language as a way of getting at that. And that mm -hmm. means cutting out all of the distractions. For so, a so in a way, what you've created is a series of micro worlds. Is that correct? Exactly. So, uh, because we're trying to think about that same thing, uh, novices, when they encounter the SNAP environment, we find are overwhelmed and it takes at least one or two sessions before they even get to start, become oriented. Yeah, because they're learning the geography of the interface. That's exactly, and, and that, that has more overhead than I would have guessed. So, because of the work that uh, Bernat Romagosa and now Zach Kolar, who's on this, I don't know whether Bernat is, I didn't see him. Uh, because of their work, you can actually create these um, micro worlds too. Just set up the blocks that you want, you okay. tell the micro world which ones you want to show up for the kids, and that's all the work you have to do. The rest of the work has already been done for us. Okay. Well, I. Uh, if it's okay, maybe uh, I'll get Rich and his team to follow up. I think we're, are we at the end of our time, uh, Aaron? What, what, our we session? still have about seven more minutes before the next Seven session. more minutes, okay. Bye, Cynthia. I, I'm going to tell you what I've been doing. Okay. I've been using Turtle Stitch a lot. And Turtle Stitch is a focus. Yes. Um, and so uh, it, it, not for second graders, <laughs> <laughs> but for, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth and up. Yeah. It's a wonderful introduction to thinking about uh, turtle geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it isn't quite, uh, you, it, the programming is different than I would do in Logo. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but it's compelling be because of uh, taking, uh, uh, 
actually using an embroidery machine? Yes. If you don't mind me asking, uh, I've seen those in our community, but uh, are, are, are there any that are uh, fairly affordable? It well, the one I have at home cost me um, $300. Really? And most of them would be, I got a, you know, it was a, it was a re refurbished one that I bought. Yeah. And the new ones are about 360 or 350. Right. Could you put, do you have a link you could post in the, in the. Yeah, chat? it's a, it's a brother SE 625. Brother. Um, and That's if you go to the turtle stitch page, turtlestitch.org, um, Andrea has various things you can look up. People tell you what machines they've been using. Okay. And it, it, um, it, it's a sort of, you can make a design in a four by four inch by four inch um, hoop size, uh, 10 centimeter, uh, 10 centimeter, uh, yeah, by 10 centimeters. And so I, um, I was working with someone who made a lot of things. I have trouble uh, putting fabric into hoops. Right. So I have resorted to using cardstock, which you just have to tape onto the stabilizer. So I yeah. make a lot of for me, that's what I like, making various kinds of designs. Well, that, that's a fantastic capability. Thank you for sharing that. Get, getting back to, about logo versus snap, uh, one thing that was interesting when Paul, uh, Paul was kind enough to, to when, when we moved his chapter into the, you know, the typeset it essentially, there were some errors that he corrected, but he, he w was reflecting on the fact that you you would do it quite a bit differently today because because the capability it's a different environment and we're have different capabilities that you want to take advantage of. Um, Paul, did you have any other uh, thoughts about that aside from what you posted in the chat? Not really. I mean. I would love to see more done with language for children. Um, a, a lot of what's done with computers, you know, in the name of getting to kids to type and getting them familiar with technology is about using computers for word processing, writing on the computer. Um, that's fine. People are going to do a lot of that. But I think there's some really interest, intellectually interesting stuff that kids can investigate about their own language uh, that can be done much more simply now. I thought even back when I wrote that book with Wally that the exploring language should be thought of as science, a science project, but in which you actually had access to all the data. I mean, you, kids can't go out and collect apes in the wild, data on apes in the wild yeah. uh, or, 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 you know, microscopic um, parts of an atom or something like that, they do have all the language in their head. And the attempt to model that language is um, instructional about language. It's also instructional about science. Now, now, I noticed that you had a comment, I don't remember where, that the current version of SNAP is more oriented toward uh, imagery and animation than, than language, the text capabilities. And Jens mentioned this morning that um, in the closing keynote, they're going to talk about maybe some possible directions for for beefing up or enhancing that. Uh, did did are you uh, did you have thoughts about what what would be needed or what would be desired? Um, yeah, they're pretty simple. One of the one of the things that Logo was able to do. Uh, there are a bunch of things that Logo was able to do that Snap can't, uh, vice versa. Snap is incredibly powerful in ways that we weren't even thinkable in the Logo days. But, um, but one of the things for language that uh, Snap doesn't right now have is the ability to handle text awfully well. Yeah. You can't very much on the screen, 
you've got this little bubble window. Bernard yeah. has improved that so that you can have different shape bubbles, but you still can't have scrolling text. And yeah. if you want to write a, you know, do an exploration of, of, of poetry or, or, or uh, an analysis of a text block, uh, any of the kinds of things that we did in the, um, uh, the, the words, especially the words part of the Exploring Language book, can't yet do it in SNAP. But but uh, hopefully, if Jen said they got sidetracked because Chrome, but and, but but that they're hoping to circle back to that. Yeah, I think it's on the list soon. Uh, so well, hopefully because so that and and uh, one other capability that he mentioned that they that we talked about is just the ability to highlight uh, some of the features of the control panel. So if you wanted to say, go to this place in the, the control palette or, or, or go there, you, you could do that from within SNAP. Uh, uh, so, um, okay, well, I, we've, we've uh, really enjoyed our time uh, catching up. The, in a way, for us, it's been a boon. I, I know people were disappointed about not being able to be in Berkeley in person, but we probably wouldn't have been able to dr drive out. <laughs> and it's wonderful to kind of reconnect with folks and find out where things are headed. Uh, and we're more than happy if people have suggestions for what might be helpful. Uh, we're very much the work. James, would you and Rich agree that this is very much a work in progress and we're happy to focus where, where it might be most useful? On that point, I want to thank you for coming by and hosting this talk. It was wonderful. I had a great time listening in. And then we're going to transition now into our next talk that's happening at 11, it's scheduled for 1120. And it's about custom block experiments. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, our, our pleasure.